Hello. Happy Sunday afternoon, everybody. Ooh, I've got a glare coming on here. Hold on one second. I love how I'm just never prepared here. All right. So, yeah, it's a little chilly. I got my flannel on. So, hey, everybody. So, we got Dawn and let's see, Pam. Welcome, guys. So, I always look forward to our Sunday afternoon crafting because, uh, like I said, when I do impromptus, I don't necessarily plan anything. Uh, I just kind of turn on the camera and, and start going. Uh, but today I have something planned, and I try to I try to plan something on Sunday, um, whether it be a technique or a process. Um, and with spring right around the co the corner, I mean, you wouldn't think so the way that I'm dressed here. Um, but with, st with spring right around the corner, I thought maybe we could make some flowers. So that's what we're gonna do today. I don't know if we're gonna necessarily make a card, um, but. I wanted to kind of show you what my process is when we start getting into spring and I know I'm going to be um, using embellishments on my cards. So that's what I thought we would do today. I hope everybody's up for that. Hi Cynthia, nice to see you. Um, so with, uh, with flower arrangements, I mean there's a lot of ways that you can go. Um, certainly you can buy the flowers already pre-cut. Um, but I like to create some of my own arrangements and I like to have these embellishments pre-made because when I'm putting together a card, I don't necessarily like to have to stop and put together embellishments. It's just really nice to be able to have some already pre-made. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So hopefully everybody will uh, kind of sit back and relax and, and we'll uh, have some fun making uh, flowers and floral arrangements. So let me go ahead and uh, transition down here. Let's see. All right. So I hope everybody's doing good. Hi, Susie. Nice to see you. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and transition down here. So as you can see, I kind of already have some things on my desk. Um, so like I said, I want to kind of talk to you about my process. Um, and then we can jump right in. So I have a love and hate relationship with flowers and, and let me tell you why. Um, to make flowers and floral arrangements, it's kind of a lot of work. Uh, you know, there's lots of bits and bobs that go into making really pretty floral arrangements. Um, so what I like to do uh, is pre-cut. So that's what I've kind of done here. So I pre-cut some of my leaves. I pre-cut um, some of my flowers here. Um, and then I've also pre-cut some embellishments because when I'm creating flower uh, focal points, like I said, I like to have them already pre-made. And I've, I've been cleaning out my dies um, so I have some really pretty dies that I found that would make really great uh, centerpieces for flowers. So I went ahead and I cut out a few of these as well. But aren't, aren't these gorgeous? I mean, sometimes I just forget about what I have. So it's always nice to go through your stash and uh, clean and organize a bit. Now, I just put together a video, I think it released yesterday, you guys. Um, on creating these flowers. Hopefully you guys had a chance to see my new video that came out. But I created these flowers using um, embossing glaze. Um, and they came out really, really pretty. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. It is in my, uh, in my videos. Um, but these flowers just came out so pretty. Um, and I plan on making some more of these as well. The color combination I used on these was the Broken China and then the Rusty Hinge. So we're gonna probably play a little bit with embossing glazes as well. So we'll see what we got going on. Um, and then I also have, see these are these. So like I said, I, um, whenever I just have a lot of scraps, I put them into a box and then um, I'll just sit down and cut several of these and put them in bags 
because knowing I'm going to sit down and create flowers. Um, so I will uh, just pre-cut and bag and separate so that way when I'm ready to go I have them all all set. So Dawn says that's what she does as well. She cuts bunches of a variety of flowers and foliage um, to make the assembling easier. Yes, definitely. And then this one here um, is the, I think these are the funky flowers. Uh, yeah, flunky, <laughs> flunky, <laughs> funky florals number one. But what I'll do with these as well, especially the dyes that have a lot of different dyes. Hi, Suzanne. I see Suzanne's joined us as well. Um, I will, again, pre-cut. And then I'll bag them based on the dye. So as you can see, I, I have several dyes here. These were actually from last spring. Um, but it just takes so much time to pre-cut these that I separate them so that way when I do want to sit down and make flower arrangements or anything like that, I have them ready to go. So that's these here. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now, I also have punches. That's what I wanted to show you. So I also have punches. So um, you can do your flowers. These are actually dies. These right here. These were dies. But I also have punches. So you can find your flowers. And I find when I'm putting together flowers, uh, layers of three work really well. So I have these punches here. And then I have another uh, die that has layers of three. Um, and that's uh, a pretty good size. It's these here. Um, so they make a, a pretty good size. And then, what else do I have on my desk? This is a Biggs die. So you guys might recognize this. This is the window pane and the flower pot. So um, I thought, you know, maybe I might put a few of these together too. I'm not sure. Um, but I thought I could show you kind of how I create flower pots. Um, especially with this die where you get four. Um, I save these. And then I turn them into little flower pots. So let's do that first. So this Biggs die um, is an old one. It's definitely not a new one. Um, but it is great for a window. I guess I should be in the camera. It's great to create a windowsill flower pot. And then with the four, you can create individual flower pots. So this is what you start out with from your, your windows here. And I save these. And then what I do is, and if you don't have this die, you can easily just cut a rectangle or a square. Um, I just kind of angle it a little bit, kind of like a, cop, uh, a flower pot. Let's see here. And if it's a little funky, that's okay, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll just take part of the top off and that becomes my lip. So it's an easy way to create pots. All right. So you can create several of these ahead of time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and emboss these because I want them to have a little bit of shine and we're going to use the same process that we did with those flowers so just kind of getting my supplies out here I can't find my tweezers so I've been having to use these jewelry um, tools <laughs> but they work well all right so once you have your pots, and again, I just started with this. Let me show you again what I did. So, um, and then I just cut a little angle, angle to be able to create a pot. And then I just cut part of the lip. And then that becomes your flower pot. And then I want it to be uh, more like a terracotta. So that's where I thought I had, 
yeah, there it is. You can use um, an, an ink pad, you can use an embossing dauber. So a lot of ways you can go here. And then I'm going to kind of do exactly the same thing I did with my with my flowers. I'm just going to kind of add my embossing glaze and then I just dip it right into my embossing glaze or my yeah, my embossing glaze. And then I will dry this. So I don't want to make a huge mess here. See if I can control the mess. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and dry this. a little bit tacky and then I'm just gonna do this again you're going to end up with. It just looks kind of like a terracotta pot. And I'll do the same thing with the lip. And I'll make these ahead of time. So, I'm dropping things here. I'll make these ahead of time. I'm not sure what I dropped. So that way um, I can have them ready to go when I'm ready to put my flowers in. I think I dropped my lid. Hold on a second. I'm losing things along with my mind. All right, well, I'll have to just put that away. I think I dropped the lid to my embossing, but I'll find it later. Okay, so again, just dumping that into my embossing glaze. just dip right into their embossing powder or their embossing glaze. I know I know a lot of people use the coffee filters uh, or you know something to catch your embossing powders but if it's small enough I find I just dip it right in. And then I'm going to take my daubers and then just kind of add some more ink. Add some more ink just to grunge it up just a little bit more. But then you have just really nice flower pots. So Pam, you said that you dump it into the tub where you have your embossing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think if you have tweezers and you're able to just dip it right in, then you don't have to worry about pouring. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. Let's see. Now, this is what I'm talking about. 
the love and hate relationship of flowers because in order to make these little embellishments, um, flower pots, arrangements, whatever the case may be, takes time. So you have to be patient knowing you're not going to necessarily be creating a project. You're just going to be creating embellishments for the project. But, you know, I don't necessarily have to sit down and create something every single time. I'm sure you guys are probably the same way. You don't necessarily have to sit down and have a finished project when you leave your craft area. All right, so I'm just kind of lining that up and then I'm gonna put it aside. And then I'll show you another thing that I do. So that basically is my flower pot, you know, and I'll make several of those um, in one sitting. So that way when I'm ready to actually add them to my projects, I have them ready to go. So that's one of the things that I do. All right, so it's really bothering me that I can't find my lid. So I heard it fall. Now I can't find it. All right. Well, I know I need to just let it go. I'll find it afterwards, but it's, it's kind of bothering me. Oh, well. Sometimes don't you get fixated on something and you just can't let it go? That's me right now. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is kind of the same process, but with this. So sometimes I like to have my window seals a little bit thicker so this is the actually this is the backing of some uh, designer paper the back cardboard and then I just cut out some white ones because I want my windowsill to be white so what I'll do is I will go ahead and just glue this right on or you can paint it white as well but if you don't have any white paint this is an easy way to get a white windowsill so, so yeah, so Dawn says the same thing. Sometimes she's just in her room uh, arranging or prepping. Yeah, I just, I think, especially for the more detailed cards or projects, you know, it, it does take some prep time. And for me, because of all the prep time it takes, it doesn't necessarily make sense for me to sit down and just make one pot, right? Um, so it's nice to be able to know you're not gonna necessarily create something, um, but you're gonna create items that you can use. So I'm just adding that white piece of cardstock right on top of my thicker chipboard. Hi Kim and then what I'm gonna do you guys probably are very familiar with this this is the crackle accents you can add that right over to make your window a little bit more distressed so let's see let me let me just add some uh, brushed, well, this is brushed corduroy. I was looking actually, oh, yes, brushed corduroy. I'm just getting remnants of it. Really, what I wanted was the antique linen. Let me, let me get that. <laughs> All right, so antique linen. Let's see. And I'm just going to use a little bit, I mean, not much. I just want to kind of make it look a little bit older. And then we're going to add some of that crackle. All right. 
All right, so we have this. And then I'm going to add this crackle here. Now, if you don't have this, this is an old, old jar. Um, in fact, when I was looking for it, I didn't know if I was going to be able to find it. So I pulled out this crackle icicle. But I didn't necessarily want it to look like icicles. I wanted it to look like a cracked window pane. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Might be time to get a new jar. I feel it coming down. Okay, we're gonna leave this upside down a minute here and we're gonna go right to this I know this is my icicles but I'm gonna see if I can still use it just to get the effect of cracking paint just lightly painting it onto my windowsill to see if I can get that effect and then we'll put it aside to dry and then we'll check back on it you've used UT so Don what is UT I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that if it's a product or a brand So just lightly covering this and then we'll set it aside to dry to see what kind of results we get. All right. Ultra thick embossing enamel. Okay. Ultra thick embossing enamel. Okay, so this is finally coming out. This is definitely a little bit thicker than the icicles. So I'm just adding this. And I'll make a few of these when I'm sitting down just to have them ready to go especially if I come up with a design that I really like and I want to make a few cards it's nice to have all of your pieces so does anybody out there have this die this window pane die it is one of the bigs uh, Tim Holtz I like it I've used it for a lot of my cards there's some dies that get a lot of use uh, and this is one of them I really like All right. so, so this type of crafting definitely takes patience all right so I'm gonna put this aside to dry I'm going to try to keep it upside down in case I want to use it again. All right. All right. So that's basically my window seal all covered with the crackle accent. And then um, I will let it dry. So let's see. Dawn says yes. Dawn, and it's cheaper than the crackle mediums when it dries you can you crack it up I'll have to check that out um, let's see what did you call it again um, 
UT ultra thick embossing enamel. All right, I'll have to look that up. Okay, all right, so that's my window seal. And then of course you can do the same thing with your flower box. Now, if you don't want to have to paint it, you can also find some craft paper that looks like um, terracotta, right? Or you can also add your embossing um, ink as well. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to glue on some paper here because I think I can get the same result. All right. So you see, just with some paper, I think it looks like terracotta. So that's, that's a pretty good substitute. And then it's also got the thickness that I like. So let's do a couple of these. Okay. So last night, Anna was about I don't know, it was about, I guess, 8 o'clock maybe. My husband's like, let's go downtown to one of the bars. And I'm like, oh, God, it's probably so cold outside. And he's like, come on, let's just go. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Once I'm kind of settled in, it's hard for me to get going. But once I'm going, I'm pretty happy. So we got off of our butts and we went downtown. Um, I've shared with you guys, I live in... Prescott, Arizona. So we have um, the main street, and I live real, real close to downtown. Um, it's called Whiskey Row. So it's it's the old saloon row. You know, it's a western town, so it has all the old saloons and uh, bars, and and it's pretty fun. Um, it's not a young crowd, I would say, because Prescott definitely is not necessarily a young crowd. I mean, you've certainly got younger people, but you've got people from all ages, which is really nice. So there was a new bar that my husband wanted to check out. It was just off of Whiskey Row, um, and he called it the Underground. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but you've got to go. you got to go down some stairs and around the corner to be able to get to the entrance. Um, so we wanted to check that out. Yes, that's <laughs> Pam, the, the home of Tim Holtz, that's correct. So uh, we went in and it was a really cute little bar. Um, ordinarily on Saturday nights they have a band, but we had some weather yesterday. So they said that they didn't have the band, but we sat at the bar um, and it was one of those bars where they make um, the real fancy drinks. And when I say fancy, it's they've got the, the I guess they call a muddler, you know, when they make the uh, whiskey, uh, their uh, mojitos and the old fashions. Um, and I had uh, a drink called the Aviator and they have this machine where they stick the glass up and it freezes the, the glass. And then they had this wood where they light it on fire and then they put the glass over it to smoke the glass. So we were right in front of the bartender that was making all of these fun drinks. So it was kind of fun to watch. And I had the Aviator, which had some gin and some other stuff. I like the sweeter drinks um, and it was good. Um, and then, um, I wanted, I really like one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, liqueurs, I guess, is uh, Amaretto. Um, and I asked the bartender if he had any drinks that had Amaretto. And he made me an Amaretto sour. Oh my goodness. It was so good. So I told my husband, I'm like, okay, that's, that's my drink of choice from now on. 
So yeah, it was fun. Like I said, we don't normally go out, but I think we might start going out. It was just a very calm evening, you know, when I had a few drinks and it was fun. And I'm just looking for something. I think as we get older, you know, oh, and then, <laughs> and then after that, um, we wanted nachos. So it reminded me of when we were in college and you'd go for your, you know, your after drinking munchies, right? <laughs> so we went to this place called The Office. They have the great, nice nachos, but they were closing down. It was like 10 or 1030. And we're like, really on a Saturday night? So then we're like, well, let's go to Taco Don's. So we go to Taco Don's and um, it, uh, it was also closed. We're like, all right, this is Saturday night and all these places are closed. So we're like, all right, let's go to Taco Bell. And y'all, I haven't been to Taco Bell in years. I can't even tell you the last time I went to Taco Bell. But we ended up getting a Nacho Bell Grande, which wasn't the greatest. But we started here, you know, at the top. Let's go to the office. And then we said, okay, Taco Don's. And then we end up at Taco Bell getting a Nacho Bell Grande. But boy, it hit the spot. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I woke up about three in the morning and I had to take some Tums. So, so I'm like, but you know what? It was fun. And my husband's like, you know, we're probably not gonna be able to do something like this in 10 years. So why don't we do it while we can? So it was a lot of fun. So that's what I did last night. I had a really good time. Um, but do it while you can, right? Okay, so I shared with you kind of my my prep pieces. And now I want to show you how to make my florals or what I do to make my florals. So you might have remembered or you might have seen my video last Christmas where I used the candle and I made this floral arrangement and I put my candle in it. That's kind of what I want to do. Um, and then it's going to fit on top of my flower pot or even you know maybe in here um so that's what i want to do so the way that i start to do that are with these leaves and i never really know what i'm going to use so i just kind of dump it out but when I make these, when I make these little arrangements, I need a base. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. So you can definitely use one of these as your base and build around it. And then when you go to put it on your card, you know, that could be your focal point. Um, or if you want to make just a smaller one, maybe you're going to be putting it into a pot like this. Then what, let's see here, what I like to use is kind of something flat like this. Um, and it doesn't even have to be fancy, just something to be able to give yourself a starter. You know, something that you can glue onto. So that's what we're going to do first here. So this is going to be my base and it's going to get covered. I mean, you could even start out with just a long piece of paper if you wanted to, uh, but just something to be able to glue onto. So when I do these, there's really no rhyme or reason. And that's why I like to have um, several pieces because I want to be able to just kind of start putting things together. All right. So I'm just trying to size this up here. So I know it's going to be kind of like this. All right. And then I'll just add some glue onto my base just to be able to hold my flourishes. You're going to see once you start adding your flourishes, they're going to stick to each other. So 
so taco time is it kind of like a taco bell is it like a uh uh yeah like kind of like a taco bell It's probably good that we ended up at Taco Bell because, see that's going to be too long, but I can always trim it down. Um, because those other restaurants I'm sure would have served just way too much, you know, more than we probably needed. All right. And if it's too long, I can always trim it. I'm not too worried about that. In fact, if I want it to even come off the side. I, th I think that would be all right. Yeah, I think that would be okay. All right. So once I have my base, then it's just a matter of, of building. Um, I'm no professional at this, believe me. I just, I just kind of layer. Um, if you want to also, you can certainly add ink to these. But I try to choose paper that already kind of looks distressed. So that way I don't have to worry about messing with the ink too much. And then I'll just continue to add glue on top to, to be able to build up my layers. So the set that I'm using, in case you guys are interested in, it's, it's a very versatile set. I like it a lot. It's, uh, what is this called? Garden Greens. And it's great for layering. Um, I typically will use this as my base and then I'll build up with these three here. This one here is wonderful if you wanna put a flower right in the middle. And that's what I did on this one. Uh, this piece here is my leaves and I just plopped a flower right on top. So this is a, a very good die to be able to create flourishes um, for your spring cards. Right. And it's even got a twig in there, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's see here. I'm just gonna continue to layer. So Don, that's one thing that I haven't tried yet is uh, dye, dyeing paper. I want to try it. I just, I just, it's one of the things I haven't done yet. Right. I'm just trying to eyeball this to see how it's gonna go. All right. And you can even tear these, which is what I like about it. So if you want to, you know, just add pieces here and there, maybe you don't need the whole piece. Maybe you just need a little piece to start building up rather than out. And then that's just basically how I do it, is I just continue to layer up to build to build my flourish. Um, so that, that's kind of what I do, you guys. And then once I have all my greenery um, all set, then I'll start adding my flowers. Pretty good, huh? Well, so what do you guys think? Have you, is this how you guys go about building your flourishes? Um, and, and I like this because then I can make several of these um, and have them ready to go. And I like this one too. This is also part of the set. Typically what I'll do is I'll just pull off the little berries and I'll, I'll just stick them on just to add color. sticking to me. All right. 
I think that's pretty good. Let's add. Pam, you don't build flourishes, so do you use them uh, in your projects or are you just not interested? I like the process of building flourishes. I just, I think it's very relaxing. All right. And then I will add my flowers. All right. So I can already see. So now remember, this doesn't have to be your centerpiece. Um, as you can see, I have less over here than I have here. So I'll just adjust. It's not going to show anyway. So I'll just adjust it when I go to glue it down and, and I'll center it. Not a fan of florals. Okay. Well, it's not for everybody. All right. And then when I go to put them down, I usually pop it. So let's see how this is doing here. So it's starting, you can't hardly tell, it's starting to crack a little bit, um, but this is going to go popped up. So what I might actually do is glue this here because I know this is going to pop up. So rather than gluing it to the base, I will glue it here. So let's do that because I think that's, that's pretty good. And I know that this whole thing is going to get covered, so I'm going to add the glue right to the window pane. So Kim says you're not artsy enough to build a flourish. Well, hon, I'm showing you how to do it now. It's not too difficult if you want to do it. Uh, I'm sure you can. It's just a matter of layering. So never say you can't, especially when you break down the process. I know that you can. All right. And then I got this little leaf hanging here. I'm not going to worry about it. I kind of like how it's starting to go up a little bit, so I might add some more here. But that's basically how it's going to look on my windowsill. All right, so I like I like that. So let me add one more piece. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what I got here. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. Okay. So I'm gonna just kind of sneak it underneath here. To crawl up my window so I know this is kind of different than what I normally do on my Sunday afternoons but um, so so help me out here so do you like uh, process no well not I guess this isn't really a process video I'd call my passport card a process video but do you like uh, videos like this where I show you how to create flourishes or I'll show you how to create you know flower pots where we may not necessarily make a project but I'm showing you how to create something um, let me know in the comments you guys what kind of videos do you like because um, I certainly want to make it fun and interesting for you um, as well as for me I mean for me this is fun I love building stuff like this so um, let me know what kind of videos do you like. Do you like where I just make a card? Do you like uh, tutorials where I show you how to do a flourish or maybe how to distress a flower? Let me know what kind of videos you like. All right, so I'm going to pop this up. Uh, so let's, let's do that now. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm just trying to think about how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to just put the foam at the edge.
every time I back up, I'm looking for that lid and I still don't see it. Let it go, Monica. All right. <laughs> it's your channel. Do what you want. We will hang out. I like all sorts of things. Some I don't know that I like until I watch it. That's fair. But it's my channel. But if I'm the only one watching it, <laughs> then it doesn't really do me any good. Um, I certainly want to make videos and do lives that you guys will get some benefit out of. And while I appreciate you hanging out with me, I want it to be informative as well. Um, so I appreciate that, Kim. Uh, for the most part, you're always going to get something vintage inspired. Um, I don't think that I shouldn't say never say never, but I don't do cutesy very often. See, I don't call this cutesy, um, but you know me, I like vintage inspired. So you won't, you won't find cutesy necessarily on my channel. Um, although I do have some lawn fawn, uh, when I was cleaning out my dyes, I found some lawn fawn dyes that I think we're going to play with one of these Sundays. To me, lawn fawn is cutesy. And there's some, some that I like. So isn't that pretty? Look how pretty. Now I just have to add my flowers. Um, we won't leave you if it isn't something we don't care for. Oh, that's sweet, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I like the live so we can chat. Generally speaking, I don't watch the video uh, of styles projects I'm not interested in if they're not, if they're not live. Okay, that's fair. Um, so yeah, um, I try to mix it up, um, so that way we can try different things. All right, so I've got to add some color to this, I think. So let's see what we're going to do here. I could just go white. Uh, well, let's put together, well, well, let's do this. Let's do that. I'm like a kid in a candy store, right? Uh, let's see, what do I got here? I got some flowers already pre-made. That might be kind of cute. Let's see. Maybe I'll use those. Kind of want to do some 3D flowers, so that's, that's just way too big, though. Let's see. Yeah, uh, so Don says the possibilities with florals are endless. Absolutely. So much you can do with them. I already have an idea of what kind of card I'm going to create with this. I don't know if I'll actually be able to create it on camera because there's some more prep I have to do. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot you can do with these. Okay, so who watched the Tim Holtz ideology release? Because I did. This, I did. I'm raising my hand. Um, and he had some, he has new remnant rubs coming out and his paper dolls are going to be smaller sizes. So of course I had to respond and message, or he posted something on Instagram and I, I said, um, so happy to see, so happy to see new remnant rubs and smaller paper dolls. Good job, Holtz. That's what I said to him. And he responded that he liked the comment. I was getting pretty bold. I said, good job, Holtz. Um, but for the most part, I mean, ideology, I have to say, is my favorite. Um, I mean, I like, I like most of it. I shouldn't say I like all of it, but I like most of it. Um, ooh, that would be kind of cute. All right. Does the flower pot go there or not? What do you think? That might work right there, right? Well, we'll think about that. Um, I didn't 
I did not buy any of the uh, uh, Revenant Rubs. Yeah, R-U-B-S. Yeah, I didn't buy any of the the bunny dyes that came out. Um, just a little, a little too cutesy for me. Um, I'm holding out for his Stampers Anonymous. I think I probably will buy a lot of the uh, ideology because I love working with ideology. Um, so yeah, I already kind of have my list going. Hi Cordelia, nice to see you girl. You missed my food story already, so you know that I always have a food story. So now we're just, we are making flower f flourishes today. So was it a yes or no on the flower pot? I don't think you should have a flower pot on the outside of the window box. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too, Suzanne. I'm thinking, I don't, that doesn't seem realistic. So we'll put that aside for a second. Um, so that's kind of too big though. Let's see, let's see what else I can find. Do I have any smaller flowers? Digging through my arsenal of flowers here. Alright. These are flowers I did last year that I still have in my in my stash. Big. Some of these flowers are a little too big, though. Uh, let's see. And I don't want to go too high up on the window. All right. So let's just let's just make a decision here. That's pretty good, I think. A lot of his uh, funky line, for lack of a better word, um, isn't necessarily what I've gotten into either. I know he has the uh, like the funky cactuses and uh, funky like the uh, London cars and the and the um, the vans. It's not really my thing either. I haven't really gotten into those. I, I've seen some cute makes, but I, again, I've I took his advice and I says stay true to you. Do you do you right? So, in the beginning, I used to just buy it because it was his. Now it's gotta it's gotta speak to me. So he makes something for everybody, which is what I love. But I don't feel the need to buy it all anymore um so it's it's really got to be my be my jam for me to invest because this this little girl has a lot of money invested in her supplies so i am that reminds me i am going to be doing a D stash next weekend, I believe. Um, so I'm going to be D stashing some of my craft supplies. I do that every once in a while, just things that I'm not using anymore. Um, so if you guys are interested in being notified when I do a D stash, I typically will do it on Instagram. Um, and my D stash is done on TMC you underscore okay so I just put up where I do my D stash so it's at TMC for you underscore shop 
So if you're not following me on Instagram and you want to be notified or be aware of when I start to do a D stash, follow me there. Um, because that's where I'm going to be doing the D stash. And the way that it works on Instagram, if you've never, if you've never purchased on Instagram, so you claim it. So I, I'll post it and then I'll put the price. Um, and then you can claim for however many days. I do it one or two days. And then I'll send you a PayPal invoice. Um, and then you guys pay me and then I ship it out. So that way, you're, you know, with the D-Stash, you're not paying taxes. Um, it's directly from me. And, you know, with PayPal, if, if you don't trust the person... Um, never just send them money direct if you buy on Instagram. Do it through PayPal because those have tracking and if you don't get your stuff, then you have recourse. But if you are interested in being notified when I do my D-Stash sell, follow me on Instagram at that handle that I just mentioned. Because I'm going to be getting rid of some of my stuff that I no longer use. Alright. So I think that's pretty good, you guys. What do you think? So that's kind of how I approach <laughs> making my flourishes. Um, and I'll sit down in one sitting. And I'll do several of these. Um, and then that way, I have them ready to go when I want to make a card. It'd be fun to kind of have some stuff hanging off the side a little bit. Let me see. Let me see how I can accomplish that. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, I kind of want to have some stuff hanging down, but I don't know. I don't know how realistic that would be. Maybe in the front. See, I don't know when to stop. Do I try to have some stuff hanging over or do I just leave it? I mean, to me, that just looks, I don't know. Should I try to add stuff coming off here, you guys? What do you think? Sometimes I just don't know when to stop. I mean, maybe something like that coming off a little bit. Maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know how you guys answered, but... So I got this poker, We Are Memory Keepers, um, which I don't use very often. It also has this where you can pick up. And I was cutting out my florals and I saw it and I'm like, oh, that might be kind of good. All right, so I think I got it at Tuesday morning on discount. We've had a conversation about Tuesday morning. They're not my favorite anymore. But they used to have a lot of good craft supplies. Okay, I feel like I always feel like I'm in surgery when I'm using tools like this for my crafting. Okay. Scalpel. There you go. Alright. Okay. Come on, cooperate. So the idea is to kind of get it hanging off the side a little bit. I think you guys know what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, Sherry, let those phone calls go to voicemail when we're on a live because we need I need your help. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh Okay, I'm just reading here. So, why isn't Tuesday morning your favorite? Oh, you haven't heard that story? Okay. So, Kim, Tuesday morning used to have tons of craft supplies. And I would buy paper. I would buy Tim Holtz stuff. I would buy tons of Tim Holtz stuff there that was getting discontinued or whatnot. 
Um, and ever since, and I'll blame it on COVID because I think that's when it kind of started. Um, they haven't had too much uh, craft, craft supplies anymore. And I don't know if they're just changing uh, what they're carrying now, but I've, you know, and I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. I thought maybe, you know, maybe it just had to do with stocking issues. Um, I don't know. But every time I've gone there, their craft supply inventory is just getting less and less. So that's why they're not my favorite anymore. They used to be one of my favorite. I mean, every town we would go to, whether it be Flagstaff or down to the valley, we'd have to hit up Tuesday morning. Um, especially when I would see the Tim Holtz um, discontinued items. But yeah, not, not so much anymore. And I don't know if they're just changing their approach or what the situation is. So that's what I mean when I say they're not my favorite anymore. They just don't carry the stuff that I would always buy there. Which is sad because I would get some great deals there. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm just trying to add some foliage coming off. Just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of tearing leaves off here. Kind of need an anchor. So this will hang off and this will be my anchor. Um... And that's kind of what I'm doing. So, let's see. So, Kim, I'm curious, where in Alaska do you live? Every time I see Kim in Alaska, I always wonder where in Alaska. All right, I think that's good. I'm about to sneeze here, so excuse me in advance. All right, so that's that's pretty much it, you guys. So there's my flower box with my flowers coming out. Um, my crackle still is not as crackly as I'd like it to be. I can see it. I'm going to add more, though, because I want this windowsill to be a little bit more crackly. Maybe it just needs to be thicker. I want it to look like cracking paint. Frida, hello. I saw you last time. So Debbie J is in the house too. Hi, Debbie. That's what I do sometimes too when I'm cooking. I'll just listen. Um, and then sometimes I hog the notes and I just comment a lot. So I'm going to be Debbie's guest on her channel on Tuesday. So that should be a lot of fun. We're going to make some cards. All right. So there it is, you guys. I think that came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, very relaxing process. I really enjoy making these flourishes. Um, and now I have an embellishment. Am I trying to make the window look weathered? Yeah, so I'm using this crackle accent because I want my paint, to, I want it to look like it's kind of cracking. So I added some of my um, antique linen and then I just kind of want it to crack a little bit. So that's that one. All right, so let's let's do something with these pots all right so let me see here so 
So I don't necessarily, I want to have it where it's just like a pot in the window. So I'm trying to think how I'm going to do that here. So let's see. You probably need a ledge still. I'm just trying to think about how I'm going to do this. Um, thanks, Donna. Okay, so if you guys have any ideas, feel free to shout them out because I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure this out here. All right, so I want to add a pot to the ledge. Uh, maybe I'll just cut part of this. Let's see, and make it like a not necessarily a not necessarily a flower pot, but a ledge. Let's see. Put it behind the window. Okay, I'll look at that. Mount it to the back so it's inside the window. Okay. So let's see. So, oh yeah, that's a good idea. So maybe I'll make, let's see. Maybe what I'll do is I'll mount it onto this and then I'll glue that. Let me think. Let me think, let me think. Yeah, that's a good idea. So have it on the inside. Okay. Do you think that pot's too big for my window? Because I'm going to have my flowers coming up. Should I try to make it smaller? All right, let's see. I think I'm trying to think how I'm going to do this. You think this pot is too big for this window, you guys? Let's see if maybe I could make it a little bit smaller. So, that. Make a smaller flower pot. Does that make more sense to have a smaller one? Let's see. Pot is too big. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. All right, so. I was thinking about that, Frida. I could put like a cat or something in there. Yeah, I have these really cute little uh, dog images that I could probably add. I'm not going to necessarily put a card together today. I'm just creating the embellishments. But I will I will uh, put my finished card on Instagram when I finish it. Alright, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So I made a couple smaller couple smaller pots <laughs> all right let's see I think that'll work okay I'm overthinking it don't overthink it Monica okay so let's see uh, I'm going to emboss these. My embossing glaze that doesn't have a lid. I know, get over it. I'm going to need to find that. Okay, so I'm going to just add my embossing ink. I need to just 
stop and clean because I can't find my tweezers either. I'm having to use this jewelry thing for my tweezers. Alright. Mm. Let's drop it. Yes, Kim, that's the lid that I dropped. I heard it fall, um, but when I did a quick look, I didn't see it under my desk. I mean, I'll find it, but... And I don't know if it's an age thing, but I can have something right in front of me and not see it and a lot of times I'll call my husband and say tell me if you can see this or tell me if you can find this and he'll come and find it check my garbage can well fortunately my garbage can is all the way to, I don't think you can see it, all the way to my left here. So there wouldn't be any chance of it going in my garbage can. I have stuff underneath my desk and I have a feeling it probably rolled underneath something. So I'm gonna have to get on my hands and knees and, uh, and find it. All right. I'll find it though. Okay, so there are my pots. That aside. Okay, so let. Oh, excuse me. All right. So my husband took me. I don't like that. My husband took me out to lunch on Friday. We have this barbecue place. Um. And he's like, we have to go, we have to go, I think I told you, go get loaded uh, potatoes. And I think I told you this story on Friday. But he went out and bought a pork roast. And he's doing it in our... He's doing it in our crock pot and he went out and bought baked potatoes. And he's we're gonna make our own. It's no wonder I don't weigh a thousand pounds with the way that we eat around here. But I know I talk about food a lot, but honestly I don't eat a lot. Like yesterday when we did the uh, the nachos, we didn't eat dinner. Um So I didn't feel too guilty about the nachos. All right. So these are going to take a minute to dry. God, those are small. Look at that little pot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the food place is done amazing. Yeah, where I live, Prescott, is a tourist town. So they do have a lot of great restaurants. It's getting more and more expensive to live here though I have to say we were lucky that we bought our house okay that's terrible 
uh, we bought our house a couple years ago, maybe three years now, and I won't tell you what we paid for it, but it's gone up about 250000 in just a few years we've been here. And uh, we're like, you know, we need to sell this house. And I'm like, well, where would we live? <laughs> well, we still need to live somewhere. So, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't think we could have afforded to live here if we bought a house now because it's so stinking expensive. All right. Yes, Donna, that's kind of what we're going to be doing. I don't even want to know how many calories that baked potato was, though. All right, so I think that's probably a better sized pot. But my flowers are going to need to be small now. All right, so let me see how I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe... I don't even know. Alright, so let's let's go ahead and just try to figure this out. Alright, so I'm going to put, yeah, Suzanne, you're right about that. Everything's more expensive, even the grocery store. Have you noticed how the uh, prices for our food is just going up too it's just awful all right okay so i'm just trying to line this pot up here should i have them overlap Ah, uh, they're so small to work with. Oh my gosh. Small pieces. Maybe I'll put a little foam dot or something on it. Yeah, gas is ridiculous too. You're right about that, Susie. With the weather going to start getting nicer, we've been talking about taking our, our camper out. But boy, we're going to... We're going to pay for gas that's for sure all right so that is too thick let's see hmm but we don't want to just not take the trailer out just because of the gas situation so we're gonna have to figure that out mm. And of course, you know, to take the trailer out, we take our truck. And that takes a lot of gas. And I guess we're saving on hotel rooms, right? <coughs> but still. All right. So I'm thinking I just want my pots to overlay. Something like that, I guess. All right. What do you guys think? And then I'll put foam dots to raise it up a little bit. I don't know. I've never done this before, so we're just trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. Where are we with time? So we've been going about one hour, 20 minutes. So we'll go another 10 minutes or so. I think I should be able to get this done in 10 minutes. By the time we put into our crafting, right? How long have I been fussing with those pots? I think that's good though. <laughs> All right. So.
So I think that will work. Cut that off. So Kim, you've been looking for a class C. So is that, what is the class C? That's the one where you drive, right? Okay, so I've got my little flower pots. Now I need to add, God, these are so tiny though. Uh, let's, I'm gonna definitely have to cut some of these down. I don't even know if I have flowers this small, to be honest with me, y'all. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's 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 see if we can figure this out. Those are some tiny, tiny pots. So I'm just going to add some glue here. And add some foliage behind it. Let's see. Tiny, tiny, tiny. I don't know about that one. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> so small. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, ours is an actual trailer that we hitch on to our truck. All right. Okay, so I think that will be the greenery. I think All right and then I'm gonna have to figure out the flower situation I guess it could just be like a <laughs> it could be just like a little uh, plants or something right I guess they don't need flowers kind of wanted to have flowers though a little bit more Oh my goodness. It's kind of holding it to dry a little bit. All right. And then let's see if I can find a small flower. So that's that's my smallest flower and I still think that's going to be too big. Is that too big, you guys? Let's see if I have, oh, you know what, maybe I'll use one of these centerpieces for the flower. I mean, that could be a flower, right? I mean, that could be a flower, right? The little, oh, this, yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe just put these. Hmm. Time to figure it out. Those are some tiny flowers. I mean, that might work. I'm just trying to figure this out you guys so maybe I'll just go with that because those are some tiny those are some tiny flowers All right, so just adding a little glue and I'm just gonna just stick it right there
All right, I guess that's okay, right? So there's my window with my flower pot. I think once I get it on a card, it'll be all right. But yeah, so yeah, I think, I think that's pretty good. So those are the two that I made today. So this one obviously is a little bit more embellished. This is just a little flower pots. We didn't really get to this, but let me just share with you real quick because I'm kind of at where I want to end. I got three minutes. All right. So if you're going to do a flourish on this, kind of just like I did the base, uh, just start building here. Um, and then that becomes what you glue onto your card. Um, and then you can do little focal points. You can do bigger flowers, of course. But then you can also do, you know, little bows, which are always really cute. So you can have, you know, your flourish with your little bow as well. So that's another thing that I do um, to create my flourishes when I don't necessarily want to have it, you know, on my windowsill, but maybe I just want to create some focal points. So that's it, you guys. I can't believe we went an hour and a half um, and we didn't even make a card, but I'm going to make a few more of these once I get off video, just because I have everything out. Um, and at some point, maybe over the next, maybe if I can get a card put together, I'll post it on my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram and you want to see my finished product, there is my Instagram account. So be sure to follow me there. And I'll post my finished card, um, probably with this, since this is the flourish that is done. So I hope you guys had fun today. I know this is a little different than I normally do, um, but I had fun. Um, these little <laughs> pots are just so adorable. Um, and I think they fit the window so perfectly. I'm going to go try to find a little cat or a little dog or something poking out the window. I think that would be cute. Um, so that's it guys. So I am going to go ahead and finish up here. I appreciate you guys all hanging out with me. Um, and let's see here. Um, that's it. So yeah, got a little blur going on with my windowsill here. So I have to find the lid to my embossing powder so i'm going to be looking for that here in a minute but yeah i had fun so hopefully you guys for those of you that don't make flourishes you'll give it a try i think it came out really cute and as you can see it's not real hard it's just a matter of layering and gluing um to be able to come up with up with something pretty fun so that's it you guys so um i will be back uh next sunday unless i do another impromptu um and I think I have another video coming out tomorrow. Um, so be watching for that. All right, you guys, we will see you next time. And until then, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and happy crafting. All right, we'll see you later.